the extra Cephalon base build, and Jimmy is going to be playing the Naganadel um, Guzzlord Miss Magia style archetype, where you're trying to activate your own B strings by giving your opponent a few prize cards early on, so you can um, sort of turbo out your attacks as well as disrupting your opponent's hand with early reset stamps. And that's 100% going to be his win condition in this matchup. He's already down a game. You're a fully tag team based attacker. So really the only way you can try and beat an archetype like Manuel's is just simply trying to make sure that he can't get set up early. If Manuel is able to use a couple elms early, get his Pidgeotos out, it feels like he'll be very ahead. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie to you, as we start setting up this game too, and uh, Jimmy did have to take a mulligan right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, before we started this round, I was really hoping we'd be able to fit, uh, we'd be able to uh, feature this match. Yeah. Mostly because I love balance, right. okay? And I love how we started round one yesterday morning mm -hmm. with this Guzzlord deck yeah. coming out of the blue. Nobody really expected it anywhere. And here we are in round 14 in a win and in matchup. We saw how in round one and round two, it just did not, um, did not produce the results that we wanted it to produce. And here we are in round 14, potentially getting Jimmy Pendarvis into the top eight. This is, uh, this could be the redemption story you guys Lord players <laughs> have been waiting for. So, so far, uh, Manuel's already had a few benefits from Mulligans, but you saw his prizes there, two welders. That could be potentially a lot of fear factor there and could definitely slow down his approach, especially if Jimmy's going for this, you know, he's going first, it's that game two, he lost the first game, so he gets to choose to go first. As long as Jimmy can sort of pop off, finding mysterious treasures, finding dust stones, allowing Manuel to take a few prize cards, reset stamp, and hope that your opponent can't find answers, that's gotta be his route to victory here. We've seen before how having two welders or more prized is just <laughs> It's not ideal. <laughs> yeah. Super, super backbreaking. It's just, it puts so much pressure on your Poke Gears, and if you do not get that early welder off, then you can just fall, fall so far behind that the game just gets out of reach. Jimmy Pendarvis getting to start this game one off, does start with Mistrevis in play as his active Pokemon, finds himself a uh, Naganadel and Guzzlord GX, Tag Team GX Pokemon, and uh, also, I believe, a Cynthia and Caitlyn off of that tag, uh, tag call. And uh, that is going to be how Jimmy's going to be starting off his turn. Remember, if you uh, tuned in in the morning on Friday morning, you have been able to see how fast this uh, Magius deck can really get uh, get going. If it gets multiple Mistrevis in play, it, uh, sacrifices both of them in order to uh, then bring, reduce your opponent down to four Ooh, prizes, wow. then all of a sudden your Beast Rings come into play and you can accelerate so many energies that your opponent just can never catch up. That's what Jimmy's hoping to do, and his hand... Uh, looks to be in good shape to be able to do so. He was a little bit far away. He was missing the Dusk Stone right now, but that Cynthia and Caitlyn, he had to discard the Great Catch in order to do it, but he picked up um, a Dust Stone as well as an Order Pad, so I think he should be able to start exploding his own uh, Miss Magius. He's also got another Mysterious Treasure in hand to find another Mischievous, also lowering his hand size. I think he's got an Eternal Attachment. He's got a Naganadel Guzzlord. I think we're going to start to see him popping off, and it's exactly what Jimmy needs if he is going to uh, bring back this second game. Right away, we see that Dust Stone bring that Miss Magius into play. This is Remember, this is the first turn of the game. This is normally not something that you're allowed to see. But because of that Dust Stone, you have this uh, this powerful, explosive turn out of Jimmy, potentially. And with still five cards remaining and no supporter played for the turn... Uh, he has, He's played the Cynthia and Caitlyn. Oh, he played the Cynthia. Okay, well, yeah. with, having played Cynthia and Caitlyn, this does actually kind of change things. And wow, it does okay. change things enough in order for him to just pass here. So he, because he can't attack turn one anyway, I think he's just saying, you know, I can sacrifice this Miss Magius if it is going to be attacked. It's also super unlikely that Manuel will... Um, attack him turn one. Normally Manuel prioritizes using um, Professor Elm's Lecture, for example, so he can always just try and use this Miss Magius next turn, get those Beast Rings firing off, and uh, really make it difficult for Manuel to make a comeback. The only sort of issue with not using Mysterious Message this turn is it means that Jimmy, uh, sorry, that Manuel starts with that bigger hand, especially because he had those additional mulligans, so he has a higher chance of having um, the Professor uh, Elm's Lecture here, but it doesn't look like he has much. He just has a bu bunch of uh, basic energy cards. We just see a Blazer here. Yeah, Blazer just dealing 10 damage and... It reveals one of the welders, uh, which is a big yeah. deal, actually. It tells him that there's a welder and where to grab it from. <laughs> but <laughs> only right. 10 damage. And it does tell him that it's going to be a little bit harder for him to find the welder bef uh, if it's not in his prize, or if he doesn't look for it through his prizes. Right. Um, but that is the end of Manuel's turn, so you're not wrong. This, uh, this turn has been very... 
very weak for uh, for Manuel, and Jimmy kind of dodges a bullet there because, of course, Manuel could have had an explosive turn himself and really put Jimmy in an awkward position. But instead, Jimmy gets to start the turn with his Mismagus already in play, gets to uh, evolve into another Mismagus, which means Manuel is undoubtedly going to be going down to four prizes by the end of Jimmy's turn as long as Jimmy has additional uh, plays available to him, which means that we could be seeing a, a beast ring play here and potentially a knockout under this Blacephalon. Yeah, we're seeing Jimmy uh, go for the order pad here. That does get a heads. So that's a really nice pickup. I think he can guarantee himself a beast ring, which I think is definitely something that might be a priority here. Normally, you want to try and get yourself a couple B strings, um, just one for the active to attack in the first place, but also have a backup just in case your Naganadon and Guzzlord does get knocked out. And obviously, he's against an archetype that does have one hit KO potential. We're also going to see that Violent Appetite being a nice minus one to make his Mysterious Message that much stronger. So although you didn't see any healing happen, you do get to do the discard effect first. And we're going to see Jimmy now get himself a fresh five card hand uh, with that Mysterious Message. I think he also drew into, well, more order pads uh, which is important. He's also got himself Lieutenant Surge's strategy. Order pad potentially able to find him any item in his deck. Will it find him the item in his deck? It's got to be a heads. It is not. It's a tails, which means order pad basically is just a discarded card in order for him to draw additional cards with his mages. He's still got so much more to go. Uh, we already know that there's one beast ring in his hand. He could go for a Lieutenant Surge straight away. Um, we're also seeing the Ultra Space here. He can thin the deck of an extra Naganadol and Guzzlord, which is a pretty cute interaction here. He would probably just use it so that he could throw it away with Violent Appetite, but it doesn't look like it's there for him, so he's just going to give himself a quick shuffle up. Also, he's going to check his sort of outs that he's going to try and look for with the Bills Analysis. So a free Ultra Space there, looking through the deck and seeing what other options he has available to him. Seems to still have something like a six-card hand, so yeah. nice. He plays that Lieutenant Surge right there in order to lower his hand size, and of course he's going to be able to play two more supporters before the end of his turn. He's going to choose to use the Miss Magius now before Mage the Bills hits. analysis, just so that he digs deeper towards B-strings, I guess. Manuel taking two prize cards. That's the total amount that Jimmy is going to let him have for free. And now Jimmy's going to try and make him go through two Naganadol and Guzzlord. Obviously, Manuel now at that break point of four can fire off some B-strings. So here's the question. Will he, did he only find one B-string, or did he find another after that Miss Magius? One B-string is good. Two B-string is great. Two yeah. B-string means you're set up for the rest of this game. We know at the very least he's got order pad and Bill's analysis, so he's going to continue to thin the deck. Tag call as well. That would allow him, you know, he's still got two more supporters he can play this turn because he's already used the Lieutenant Surge. Absolutely. So he can alway, always go for the Bills into a Cynthia Caitlin or vice versa. You see how smart this deck really is right mm -hmm. here after you see this tag call because not only do you basically build it to have a really explosive turn, but then after that, you have that Lieutenant Surge's strategy and mm -hmm. all these other resources in order for you to kind of then cement your position after you've established it. So you start using your Malo and Lana in order to reduce the or, uh, remove the damage. You use your own uh, uh, Guzzlord's ability to remove the damage as well. So this is basically a deck that's built to just get a ton of energy into play as soon as possible and then maintain them and hope that that uh, Ooh, this damage reduction and damage removal is enough for you to be able to just... Uh, uh, keep these Pokemon in play until you manage to take all six, all six of your own prizes. And it's a fantastic Bills analysis. I think it's the two ideal cards Jimmy would have asked for. He got himself that second B-string that we've already mentioned. Exactly. And it got him a reset stamp. So that's going to be putting Manuel down to a four-card hand. There's only one Pidgey developed on his board. So even if he was to find one Pidgeotto, it's such a wild combination of cards for a Blacephalon to do much. So uh, this is going to be really, really fantastic pressure from Jimmy. Taking a Blacephalon off the board. Uh, initiating that prize race and really trying to ruin Manuel's early hand. You see Jimmy's deck in action here. You see how I mean, look how many cards he's gone yeah. through. That's insane. You see how powerful Still has one more supporter. And, and <laughs> Guzzlord is when it really gets going. And it's not even that difficult for it to get going. Here's the reset stamp. Really, the, the last piece of that little puzzle that Jimmy just uh, assembled as now the reset stamp just removes all the... Uh, all the benefits that he that he gave his opponent by setting up, right? Like, if you give your opponent two prize cards, that's two less cards in his prizes that he has to take, which means two more cards he gets to draw. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you t shuffle all of these cards back into his deck, and, well, there's a Pidgeotto, by the way, so this is going to be a good news for Manuel, so I'll continue this thought in a second. But now, at this point, Manuel is hoping to uh, find a enough, a, a proper combination of cards to welder onto his Blacephalon. Oh, it's huge. He's got himself a Professor Elm's Lecture. I think um, because he only plays non-GXs, and I think because there's a Lily's Polka Doll here, I think he still has to have the slow route. He just says, as long as I can set up, I should be fine. So that's why you're seeing him grabbing two Pidgeys as well as another backup Pidgeotto, because he knows that Jimmy's 
only win condition is just sort of stamp me out of the good cards. So as long as you just have all of those um, Pidgeys ready to rumble, it shouldn't be a problem. There's Pidgeotto. Does Airmail find him additional resources to get Pokegear an explosive turn going? Turn. Yep. Pokegear could always find himself a welder. It's interesting that he does it this turn um, because you could dig deeper with additional um, airmails for next turn, but he finds himself another Professor Elm's Lecture, which is exactly what he wants, I think. Um, he can now put down the extra Pidgey, and it means that he'll be establishing like all three next turn, sure. so his draw engine will be pretty much fully online get a manual attach in for turn as well. You say it's exactly what he wants, but the reality is that he's has, he has very few energies in play, right? I mean, I think he has time. That's the good news about like the nature of his deck. Um, Jimmy can only take individual prizes outside of his GX attack, right. which can take two at once, of course. Um, so I think he has a few turns to develop these Pidgeotto. So now we see that Bill's analysis here from Jimmy. And... Jimmy doesn't really have too many ways around, you know. He's made his play, basically. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You're, uh, you're absolutely right there. And Manuel kind of gets to sit behind this Lily's Poke doll, right? And yeah. that does let him start to slow the game down, uh, so to speak. But still, this Blissephalon requires three energy, and then it gets KO'd in one hit by, by Guzzlord. So really, you need to see an explosive turn out of Manuel to knock out a, uh, a Guzzler before he can start healing. Mm -hmm. If you see that, which once you have multiple Pidgeotos, it really does become quite easy. But if you see that, then really Jimmy is just in a really bad spot because this feels like a really bad matchup uh, for, for this Naganadil and Guzzler GX. It does. I think um, Jimmy sort of made his play already on his second turn of the game, and the four cards were kind to Manuel, and the draw for turn, of course. Um, it got him into a one airmail as well as a decent supporter card, so... I think um, he sort of got around that initial reset stamp. Um, and we're just using that Ultra Space, I believe, for no effect there. That's why we're seeing a quick shuffle. Um, we're going to see airmails start to fly as well. All right. That was the first airmail. Potentially two more to go. Finds a Pidgey and potentially another card. Goes with a Pidgey. So that's the second that airmail. Pidgey because you already have the Professor Elm in hand. It feels like you can always access the Pidgey. Maybe they were both targets that he yeah, could find. I was going to say, maybe it's just not a not another great card that was paired with it. I think sometimes you also play uh, Ditto Prism anyway, so he could still have three valid targets in his deck, potentially. It was actually a great catcher that he could have taken, so hopefully he still has three valid targets, otherwise he's like negative one to himself for no reason. Okay, he has. <laughs> 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 Professor Elm's Lecture finds three Pokemon that are 60 hit points or less and um, put, places them in Manuel's hand. Of course, Professor Elm's Lecture, a great pairing with Pidgeotto, who happens uh, to have 60 he point points. Yeah, he, he yeah, remembers. He cannot evolve yeah. uh, the Pidgey into a Pidgeotto. Just one more uh, uh, Luft post, which is Airmail and Jim. Airmail. Pokey like is pretty good for next turn. He's going to continue to manually attach to his Blacephalon. He knows that Jimmy only plays great catchers, so he knows that that Blacephalon is always going to be safe to just you know manually attach slowly towards... Man, at this point, Jimmy is not gonna is not feeling great. You're facing down three Pidgeot, two yeah, three Pidgeotto, a Pidgey, and two Blissephalon. So it's like the perfect setup for Manuel here. Really, he's not far behind. He's actually ahead if you really think about it. And um, all, yeah, all Jimmy can do is be patient at this point. He's holding on to that reset stamp. He's hoping that this first one didn't quite work out. Now I'm gonna have to try and stamp Manuel down to one. Just get one like free turn of attacking and then just GX for game like eventually. That's all he's hoping for at this point. But he's kind of just got to ride the storm, let Manuel build up this big hand, and then Jimmy will try and stamp him down to one and hope that the like three airmails that Manuel has isn't good enough. I think that was a poker gear that just failed there as well from Manuel, his first action. Again, I kind of feel like you would probably want to do the airmails before any of this because you're digging deeper towards right. the welder. But I guess he's also looking for a bunch of like fiery flints and other such cards. He does have a Poke Gear, though. There's a Possibly there's a different card that he was searching Looks with. to find that Welder. So yeah. That's looking good. Yeah, Welder was a, a very, very uh, important pickup here. I think Fiery Fin is the next thing on his agenda with uh, these airmails. Haven't seen many energy hit his discard pile just yet. I think there's only like one in there from like the Blazer uh, from his Blacephalon earlier on in the game. So we're starting First to see the airmails. Yep. We're looking for a Fiery Flint. Uh, is f would fire crystal be relevant, uh, relevant right now? I think he's already got one in the hand, and it only access is one fire. Okay. So, so yeah, you no. just see him look through. He, it's basically flint or just physical fires is all he really cares about too much right now. A skateboard goes into the hand. Final airmail. I believe there's a fire energy. Fire energy's not too bad. Heat, Heat factory, factory also helps him dig a lot deeper. 
I don't mind this at all. It's a free discard because he's already holding the fire crystal. Right. I think you're... I mean, he's also got the debate of Welder. It's like the same card because like you, either way you need to draw into a fire. But you've got the fire crystal regardless, so you know you can at oh, least get one. Oh, uh, there's another fire crystal in his hand now too. Now he can Welder for three, and he's really hoping to find a fiery flint here or just a bunch of physical fires. <laughs> All right, well, there's that welder. Ooh, Draws not three additional cards. I don't think he can reach a knockout here. 300 is a lot of hit points to hit. Obviously, we're on a multiplier of 50 here, guys, so the 280 is essentially 300 <laughs> when you're facing down at the Cephalon. Yeah, unfortunately, not having access to enough fire energy from the discard pile means it was fiery flint or bust, and it ended up being a bust style situation. I really like the, the polka doll inclusion in Manuel's yes. deck. It allows him to make this play the escape board so he can just try and buy himself an additional turn here. It's something that we haven't seen in many of the other uh, Blacephalon Pidgeotto lists, but it really does help him buy some time, and it's going to be a real pain for Jimmy because he has no way around this. Yeah, it was a combination of Welder uh, attaching that uh, that additional energy so you don't fall behind on energies, and then the Lily Spokadol allowing him to not provide a, a prize for Jimmy, so Jimmy can never really get, a get, get ahead here. Uh, at this point, do you consider using the GX attack of your Jimmy? I mean, it feels like you can do it at any point. I would still probably just want to go through the Polka Doll as quickly as possible. I want to get my attacks out of the way, um, just because you could. I mean, he, uh, Manuel might have to just discard his own Polka Doll regardless. So I guess you, well, it doesn't discard. It goes back into like right. the deck. Um, but yeah, it looks like Jimmy uh, chose to knock it out. Th I just believe. knock it out. Yeah. yeah. I don't mind either way. Like, yeah. regardless, you need to weave in the GX at some point, but you've got to make Manuel play and make him find stuff earlier. And what a huge top deck. He got into that. He found fiery the Fiery Flint, Flint finally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Finds the Fiery Flint there, which guarantees him a knockout here against Jimmy Pendarvis' first Guzzlord. But like you said, this is exactly where Jimmy knew he was going to end up, uh, end up okay. after, uh, after that first uh, reset stamp failed. Yeah. I think now that he's reached knockout, the next thing on Manuel's agenda is also have additional energies so that he can weld it to the bench for Cephalon. So he needs just less in total in order to close the game out. Sure. And if you oh, can we picked one up there. Yeah, if that's you can huge. discard additional cards. Oh, there's a welder, by the way, yeah. Yep, that's uh, huge. Yeah, that was a crucial, crucial pickup. There's three fires in the discard pile uh, for Manuel already. So he is already sort of over knocking out. So he will be able to use the welder on the bench for Cephalon, even if it is just for one energy. And then, like, if you draw into another one, you can get a manual attachment. Give yourself easier ways to finish Jimmy off with that second Naganadel Guzzlord uh, in the back. So can he, he afford a welder two energies? It in? looks yeah. like he, he wouldn't take the risk otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe he would. I'm not sure. But, yeah, being able to afford to welder two energies into, wow, uh, so into play and discard enough to, to one-hit KO the, the Guzzlord is huge here for Manuel. It's going to mean that the uh, reset stamp to one is going to be that much more likely to fail. And now Jimmy Pendarvis still has four prizes remaining, but Manuel gets himself down to a single prize card. Not all that relevant since you still have to knock out a tag team Pokemon, but still, that means one more <laughs> knockout and Manuel wins this game. Can Jimmy Pendarvis lock Manuel's hand down to one with that reset stamp? If so, then Jimmy does have a chance at extending this to a game three. However, that seems unlikely uh, as you can see that there are still three Pidgeotto in play for Manuel, which means we're going to be seeing three additional cards drawn for Manuel. And not only that, but he gets to pick what he draws, basically. Ooh, I think it was a Poke Gear as well that was picked up. Jimmy doing all he can, though. He's sort of making his move. He's right. just going to take the active uh, knockout and Another force Manuel to have a bunch of stuff. But once again, there's a Poke Doll. So yeah. now he has two turns to accumulate this combo. These I really feel like Manuel. Huge. Yeah, Manuel's built his deck very, very cleverly. These Poke Dolls have been monstrous. He may not have built the deck with Naganadel and um, Guzzlord in mind, but <laughs> <laughs> it was a very, very uh, pleasant side effect, I'm sure. For sure. We start to see airmails take effect now. A fire Ari flint Flint's. is great. <laughs> yeah, huge first airmail. Oh, welder as well. Phenomenal. Huge, huge first welder airmail. Does he really? Oh, and well, a fire crystal. That's also a great These card. are two crucial cards that he's finding. I think he's starting to do the math, wondering if that's going to be enough already. I don't think we're there just yet. A physical fire helps him, but this is the joy of the Lily's Polka Doll. He can just set this up over two turns. There's Does no he pressure here at all. Heat Factory? Yeah, that's in play. I think he's going to be firing okay. it off now. So there it is. Heat Factory fires off to draw three new cards. I believe that's another fire crystal? Yeah, it looks like it. It's surprising to me that he actually got rid of this fire. I think um, I probably would have held it personally. It depends how many are left in his deck. Yeah. Uh, so it is a fiery flint instead, and he's discarding. Uh, the flint and an additional card. Yeah, you see, I probably would have held deck. that fire. I guess now he's looking for just physical fire crystals. Well, that's not a good trade-off, discarding three cards to find one. Well, when the ones can close the game, I think it's pretty chill. Um, 
but still, I mean, here he is. So far, he's just accumulated to 150 damage this turn. He couldn't find himself a backup Polka Doll, so essentially he's saying, Jimmy, you can have one more turn. I'm just going to try and hope that my air mails close out the game and find me that final Fire Crystal to get over the line. Do you feel like Manuel is starting to display some nerves here? I feel like he is. I think he's pretty ahead, though. I still think this Polka Doll might lock it up for him. I mean, he's seeing like eight cards, and his deck is pretty light at this point, so I don't think it's wrong to just dig for Fire Crystals to close at all. I think, uh, I think he's in a good spot. Jimmy, all he can do, knock out that Polka Doll, and it's down to Manuel now to just promote that Blacephalon, do a bunch of air mails, and see if he can find Fire Crystals. That's Jimmy the only card. One Fire Crystal is all he needs. Really liking how Jimmy is not really overthinking these turns. He realizes he has to win not only this game, but an additional game in order to top eight. So oh, there's the Fire Crystal. Yeah, I there's that Fire it. Crystal. I believe that's going to be enough. That Fire Crystal should, uh, and there's Red a wall as well. Uh, so it should be enough, I believe. I'm trying to do the math. As long as there's, there's six, in the six cards pile. in his discard pile, for sure, <laughs> I think right? he's there, yeah. He's Can definitely done some big like uh, fireball circles before. There it before. is, for sure. There's plenty. Yes. So it looks like that Fire Crystal. <laughs> Manuel yep. with a fist bump. He knows. He gets there. One Fire Crystal down. Jimmy about to get the bad news of that Just second Fire actions, Crystal. Making sure he doesn't uh, make any mistakes here. Double Fire Crystal and Jimmy knows. That's the game. Yep. Jimmy scoops up his cards as Manuel Jorach wins two games to none and advances to the top eight in all likelihood in this Latin American International Championships. Huge win for Manuel, defeating one of the best players in this game in a very quick, well, maybe quick isn't the right word, <laughs> but a very decisive uh, two games. Yeah, I mean, Manuel, you can see exactly how much it means to him. Uh, I think he's one of these players that's quite consistent in Europe. Every now and then you'll see him in the, well, most of the time you'll see him around the top 32 placements, a handful of top 16 placements, but this top eight is huge. He's really hun hungry for a big win because he's been missing out a few times. Yeah, we were talking a little bit earlier when I 